So we're going to stick with talking about independent comics, and we're going to talk about another big newsmaker from this weekend's Comics Pro event. Now, this started to make news before Comics Pro, but it had everyone at Comics Pro talking. And we're talking about a series of tweets from Boom Studios CEO and owner Ross Ritchie. Um, Ross basically talked about Boom cutting down the number of releases that they released in 2019, which of course was Boom's really boom year, right? It was their landmark year, their year that they really had a coming out party as a major publisher. Um, and what Ross was pointing to was that he felt like cutting down the number of releases that Boom released in 2019 allowed them to focus in on those releases. It was quality over quantity. And he feels like that was the key to his success. Furthermore, he applauded Image Comics for their kind of attempts to do the same thing and cut down their number of releases. And then he implored the rest of the industry to get on board with this concept and cut it down. Now, he looked at it from a retailer perspective. And we've talked about this on the channel, right? Retailers, they have so many books to order for their shelves. So I, I, I get where he was coming from, from a retailer perspective. My question to you guys is from a collector perspective, do you applaud what Ross Richie's saying, or do you not want to see some of your maybe beloved Marvel releases no longer um, be filling the shelves? I, I wholeheartedly applaud what he's done. Um, Cause the, the deeper I get into comic book collecting, the more I see squirrel, 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 squirrel. And I'm grabbing this and I'm grabbing that. And you know, Marvel's counting on me to do that by releasing seven, eight, nine X-Men titles. And I'm like, oh, I, I want to know the whole story, what's going on. Well, great. I'm buying the books, but is that for the best? Uh, there's, a, there's a responsibility that he's seeing on cutting back and doing what's best for his company where Marvel, it's not sustainable. It's not to have, they, they can't have eight, nine, ten different titles of one mythos or one you know like, like world or universe they can't keep that up comic book shops can't keep up with them on that like my current lcs that i favorite and i love and I, I i go to twice a week they have four shelves for marvel just to keep up with them right now and they're redesigning their uh their um floor plan because they're running out of space they're down to three shelves for DC because DC is a little bit um, cut back. Um, and then the independents, they're piling multiple independents on top. And, and boom, thankfully, with their cutback, their display has been phenomenal lately. I'm not filtering through a bunch of different things to find what I want boom related on the shelf if it's not on my polls already. But when it comes to image, you got like eight titles stacked onto one shelf. And I'm like, well, I got to sort through all this up to find what I'm looking for. And that's not what the LCS wants, right? So I wholeheartedly applaud this thought process and um, this conversation topic. Yeah, I'd like to have, it would be nice to be a little more clear, streamlined. Um, I collect mostly Venom, but when you have, like I think number 25 is coming out, it has nine or, nine or 10 different covers. Yeah. It's like, that's freaking overkill. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous at a, at, 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 a, at a point. And, you know, I, I think what's a new, what, you know, I have, I collected comics when I was younger and I got recently got back into it. And when I remember coming back into it, I was like, man, where do I start? There's just so much out there to look at. What do I, what do I collect? But there was something that was a little more let and, and you had, you know, I think they, they, they reckon it to go into the store, the grocery store, and seeing there's so many versions of barbecue sauce. Well, if you had just a couple of versions of barbecue sauce, and you picked up that because you have just a select few, you're gonna make a quicker choice and it's easier for you and you'll return it there because it's easier and you don't have to worry about pricing and all this other jazz. So I, I would be cool. I like the, the thinned out in the crowd there. Well, you mentioned barbecue sauce. This is a very, very close comparison to the beer industry fighting over shelf space. Kid you not. Um, oh, totally. Michigan is, is the forefront of the craft beer industry, one of the forefronts of the craft beer industry. And we see this every day, people fighting for shelf space for their different beers. So the comic book industry is seeing that now. I'm going to say there could be a thousand barbecue sauces on the shelf. And we all know Sweet Baby Ray's is the one you get. Back. Sweet <laughs> Baby Ray's. <laughs> I, keep a couple, I keep a couple of bottles of that in there. Definitely so, my go-to. I'll say if you like sidewalk sales for comic books, 
then by all means, just make a bunch of different comics for it. Mm -hmm. But I also like what Ross is doing with Boom. I like what Image is doing. But ultimately, we always go back to this, or I always go back to this, is we've talked about on the show, like, hey, with so many comics coming out this week, I have to pick and choose what I buy because I always have a budget. So if you have a budget, you're going to kind of stick to what you want anyways. But I do like the quality over quantity because sooner or later you get some of these, there's not everyone that's Donny Cates out there that can write eight or nine books and they all be good. You're going to stretch these writers that are writing multiple titles, publishing multiple books out. Sooner or later, the books are going to drag down. You're not going to have the quality of the story that you're going to have. And I mentioned it a bunch of times on here, like the X-Men books, the Jonathan Hickman X-Men books. I was kind of on board during those series. And I said, but wait, because I'm sure they're probably going to make like, six different eight different x-men series off of this and that's where i always lose interest and sure enough i'm of the mind where i think less is more but i can also see why collectors are out there going hey we're big boys we can make our own choice more comics is better and i'll pick and choose what i want to read well jack had mentioned something in the past that uh uh, vendor collectors are completionists and i'm very much like that and i do have a budget and so because i do have a budget and i want to be able to capture everything i get second prints i do all i every cover that's come out i have everything in volume four but my pocketbook is taking a hit on that one title because there is so many different covers and it's and i wish there was less so i had less to, to, to have to go to, to have to go after but um uh, and wait till you start yeah. buying for your kid yeah <laughs> i know he's gonna want something probably something else crazy that has nine million covers every, I've, every I've been doing month. that with batman since new 52 i buy three copies of each issue oh. for so when they get to that age be like here's a comic book collection take it or leave you know <laughs> yeah for sure no but the thing about this for me um i think the cut down is necessary more from the big two than it is from the independents i applaud ross ritchie what he what he was speaking of to like his company like he said, allowed them to focus. It allowed them to take every release. Um, And people know this because we obviously, like we were behind a lot of boom releases. And we know like the care they took into every book that they put out this year. Like they really marketed the crap out of it, which if you're a creator owned title um, and you're a creator, right? And you're say um, a James Tinian writing Once in Future, you really appreciate the efforts that were made by boom. Another great um, point that was made uh, you know, through all of this is like the work that Boom's kind of marketing department has done this year. And I think that that is a testament to the people, but it's also, again, a testament to this idea. Like when you've got less to market, you can really focus. You look at like what Marvel's got going on and Brian, you you hit the nail on the head with the X-Men stuff. Like if they would have just come with X-Men, X-Force, and maybe one or two solo titles, yes, there would have been a plethora of characters left unused but they could have showed up from time to time ryan you know as a venom guy part of what venom collectors used to collect is venom showing up in other people's books we don't have a lot of that going on anymore because everyone's got their own damn book so nobody (laughs) needs to show up in anyone else's book you need raw smackdown and nxt and AEW. there yeah and and so the problem is everybody's got their own book there's no more of the of this like little monthly crossover um these characters like Bishop, we try to pretend our main characters. And then we create all of these teams and they start off well, books start off well and they peter out. The other thing to think about is, is copyright law. So I think a lot of people aren't aware that like if Marvel doesn't use a, a title for a comic after a certain number of years, they actually <laughs> lose the copyright to that title. So like they released a Force Works comic last year because their copyright stick. Their copyright, their copyright was just about up. So a lot of people don't realize that they're almost pigeonholed into creating junk we don't want because they don't want to have DC literally steal it or it, or an image creator take it. Um, there are actually a few Marvel entities that have actually they've lost the copyright on recently. Some smaller teams from the '90s that some creators have talked about releasing on Image and things like that. Um, or and if Nightwatch is one of those. I don't. Th- I don't think Nightwatch was actually one of them. Um, but it, in that era, you're in the right yeah. era of like. Uh, of there was a team. I can't remember what team it was though. It's, some people were joking about it because Donny Cates said he would love to be involved. So it's the same kind of situation. So I think um, 
I think that if Marvel could cut down their number of, of releases, it would allow retailers, when an event like Batman 89 happens, to be able to really capitalize on it. If you were to go to the average retailer and say, hey, something big is happening in Batman 89, you need to order more. How many of them even have the available cash flow to dip in and order, say, 300 more copies? Most of them don't. Yes, there's exceptions, but most of them don't. And they don't have the cash flow because while, you know, like Andy talked about, you know, you're picking your budget, your titles you want, the retailer has to guess what are the ones that Andy's picking? What are the ones that Brian's picking? What are the ones that Ryan's picking? And then what do I need to carry so that I get all of their money? And how many titles will I carry that no one will end up picking up? And as Brian said, end up on sidewalk sales um, and operating at a loss, which is just not the point of the hobby. So I think for everyone, less is more and should result in a better quality product and more attention and oversight to these things so that hopefully a publisher like DC Comics, when they have a punchline, can market it the way that Boom marketed their top line stuff in 2019. Yeah, pull list, pull list, pull list, pull list. Manage your pull list accordingly because that's going to benefit your LCS. Yeah, so you watch that be- last call show on Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel yep. and make sure you get those FOC pre-orders in. Yep. And, I, and I like- use, use that previews magazine too. manage your yes. pull list accordingly to take care of your LCS because your LCS is going to take care of you. I like the last two, these last two topics because it shows to also that the, these companies are, are putting value in their stories that they're putting out. They feel so good at the, the quality or the, or the product they're putting out. That they're willing to take these types of risks. So that makes you even more intrigued on man. They're, if they're willing to risk a lot, of that what uh, what these other companies are doing man they got to be putting out a pretty good story or a pretty good uh 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 yeah sorry yeah that's a really big warning sign in my opinion though when a publisher has to come out with a quote unquote roadmap on the seven, six or seven different titles they're reading on how to read them accordingly that's a big warning sign when when i have to be shown on a roadmap how to read a story because there's eight different books like Brian said, no, 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 I'm done. <laughs> like when there's that many different titles, I'm done. Like I fell into it like for absolute X-Men. carnage. <laughs> I, I, yeah, absolute carnage. I didn't buy into because of that. I fell into it for X Men because X Men is X Men, but they are ending. Um, uh, they're ending Falling Angels, and they're they're starting to they're starting to dwindle that down and cut it back a little bit. So, and obviously, if they don't cut it back, I'm going to cut back on my own because I it just can't keep up with seven or eight titles in one world. So if there's less books coming out, do you think you're more likely to spend more to buy the books that you like and then submit them for grading to CGC or it'll be about the same? Damn. That's a good question. Um, that's, yeah, that's good. I got uh, me personally. I wait for the community to decide on that. If, 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 uh, if the community deems that a book is going to be, I have a price point in my mind with my personal collection. When a book hits that 30 or $40 range and I want it for my personal collection, that's when I would consider setting it off. If I've got an, if I've got a very good nine, eight candidate, that's when I'll send it off about the cost to get through CDC or CBCS or one of the grading companies and then get it back. Um, that's where I feel comfortable for my personal collection. If I'm doing my own submitting, if I want to hit up uh, Nick at slab heroes or something like that, you know, I'll pay attention to his feed and what's going on. But if it's not for my personal collection, then, you know, I don't hit him up. 